Welcome back to Fox Recaps. Today, I'm going to explain the movie Before the Fall, released in the year 2004. The premise of the movie is set in 1942 Germany. Friedrich Weimer is the son of a poor factory worker. He recently graduated from high school and wants to study further, but the financial condition of their family doesn't allow it. His father hopes that one day, Friedrich will be a higher level factory worker and make a better living than him. Other than doing small jobs, Friedrich loves to box. He trains in the town's local gym and is quite skillful. One morning, a boxing trainer and teacher of a Nazi school, Napola, brings his students to the boxing center. Friedrich is made to fight a student who's a professional boxer. He shows great skills in the fight that impresses the trainer. He manages to beat the opponent to the ground, but the win is only ensured when he knocks him out. In the last second, Friedrich feels bad for the opponent and loses the match. Although he wasn't the victor, he managed to catch the trainer's attention. The man asks him to apply for Napola since he has the physique and good health to get in. Initially, Friedrich is reluctant because his father is anti-Nazi. However, if he graduates from Napola, he will be one of the elite soldiers who will never have to worry about money. In the afternoon, he goes to the application center where his health and speech are checked. After confirming that he qualifies in every aspect, the officers approve him. Now all he has to do is get a consent signature from his father and he will be admitted to the most prestigious academy in Germany. Friedrich returns home late that day and shows his father the papers. The man bluntly refuses to sign them and orders Friedrich to forget such absurd ideas. Friedrich has a little brother who he loves dearly. He helps him take a bath while telling him what happened that day. After that, their father takes a bath in the same water to save money. Friedrich is informed that he'll be sent to a learning program next month. His father's afraid he'll make a stupid decision in a hurry and is eager to steer him away from the Nazis. At night, Friedrich talks to his brother and says goodbye before forging his father's signature and running away from home. In the morning, his parents find a letter that says he's going to Allenstein to join Napola. His father is so mad that he breaks Friedrich's bicycle in anger. Somewhere else, Friedrich hitchhikes to Allenstein and finally reaches the academy. It looks like a castle out of a movie that leaves him speechless. The trainer welcomes him in and introduces him to his roommate, Christoph. Christoph shows him around, teaches him how to arrange things in the closet, and asks him to come down to the auditorium in 15 minutes. When Friedrich wears the uniform for the first time, he cannot help but smile to himself. In the assembly, the head director of the academy welcomes all the cadets and addresses them as the future elites. Throughout the speech, Friedrich has a subtle smile on his face. He knows that he made the best decision of his life and is hopeful for the future. After the assembly, Christoph introduces him to the rest of their roommates, namely Heffa, Jaden, and Siggy. All of them are friendly and welcoming. Suddenly, a senior student and supervisor, Yauha, barges in. He orders Friedrich to do 100 push-ups for his wardrobe not being organized. The trainer sees this and stops the commotion. At night, Friedrich can hardly fall asleep. He sees that the bed next to him is empty and tries asking Kristoff about it. But it turns out that they're not allowed to talk after the lights are out. In the morning, they're joined by the sixth roommate, Albrecht Stein. He is the son of the city's governor and is acquainted with many high-profile officers. Albrecht is the least interested in being a soldier, but loves to write poems and essays. He helps Friedrich make his bed properly, after which they become friends. Then, they're trained by the cruel instructor, Karl. Yauha informs Karl that one of Friedrich's roommates, Siggy, has wetted his bed for the second time this month. As punishment, he's made to bring his mattress to the field and pee on it in front of everyone. He's humiliated and insulted for something he has no control over. Yauha, on the other hand, feels accomplished for causing trouble for Siggy. In class, the comrades are taught about Hitler's speeches. They evaluate his words and write essays about his wisdom. Darwin's theory of survival of the fittest is advocated as a natural way of life. The theory is also used to rationalize the imprisonment and killing of the Jews. The comrades are also taught to shoot and use several weapons. Friedrich joins the boxing club, which only consists of himself. He trains hard to impress the trainer who has put so much of his faith in him. It turns out that Napola was the boxing champion in the inter-school competition, but has been losing for the past few years. The trainer hopes Friedrich will bring the medal back to the academy this year. 
A month later, the comrades get a letter from their families. Friedrich also receives one from his mother who hopes that he's well. Albrecht had sent several essays to his parents and they return them back saying all of them are well written. However, he knows that they never read it because the pages still have a strand of hair that he put when he sent them. Friedrich feels bad for the guy and takes one of the essays away to read it. This further tightens their friendship. At night, they take a risk and go to the servants' quarter and spy on a girl changing clothes. Thankfully, she doesn't catch them, but the incident is a bonding moment for the two. For the next few months, the training continues and Friedrich gets better with time. Then, the day of the qualification arrives. Friedrich puts up a great fight and makes the opponent take support from the ropes. But to win the fight, he must knock him out, although the guy has already given up. Friedrich is in a moral dilemma, but he chooses to win the game. Everyone cheers for him, except for Albrecht, who thinks hitting someone who gave up is not ethical. Friedrich is praised by the higher elites and feels at the top of the world. That is, until Albrecht calls him out for being ruthless like the others. The next morning, Siggy accidentally wets his bed again. Yauha threatens to tell the trainer and asks a desperate Siggy for an outrageous amount of money. He's given until dinner to arrange the money before Yauha informs the trainer. That day, the cadets are taken to the field and are trained on how to use a stick grenade. A guy messes up and drops a triggered grenade. The trainer, who used to boast about bravery, runs away in an instant, leaving the others to die. In a moment of panic, Siggy shows bravery and covers the explosive with his body. In an ensuing explosion, he dies but saves the lives of over 20 cadets. The next day, he's given a medal of honor and thanked for his bravery. Friedrich finds it strange that the man who punished Siggy for something so stupid has been the cowardly one this whole time. Every guy is furious at the trainer who doesn't even acknowledge how irresponsible he has been. The next day, he lectures them on building tougher stomach muscles and asks one of the guys to punch him in the stomach. Friedrich volunteers and punches him as revenge for Siggy. Later, Albrecht invites Friedrich to his mansion for his father's birthday. On reaching the mansion, Friedrich is left speechless. But what catches his attention most is how Albrecht's parents are dismissive of their son. The governor stops Albrecht from reciting a poem in front of everyone and pays no attention when he talks. It's clear that he thinks poems and essays are unfit for men and wishes his son was more like Friedrich. When the men get drunk, they ask Friedrich to challenge Albrecht in a fight. The guys are reluctant, but they're forcefully made to go against each other. Friedrich is bound to win, but he only dodges and refuses to attack his friend. Not wanting his sympathy, Albrecht asks him to fight back, which causes him to be knocked out in a single punch. His father and his friends all praise Friedrich, while Albrecht sneaks off to his room. The duo returns to the academy at the start of winter. At night, their class of cadets is asked to report to the governor instantly. It turns out that a group of Soviet prisoners have stolen weapons, killed people, and escaped from a nearby village. The class is made to separate into groups and asked to catch the prisoners by force. They are also handed rifles and encouraged to shoot at sight. Albrecht and Friedrich end up in the same team yet again. A while later, they come across a group of people running away from a hideout. They openly fire at them, which ends all their lives. But on taking a closer look, they're shocked to see the prisoners are just a bunch of kids. Albrecht tries saving the one that's still alive and goes into a frenzy while trying to do it. Just then, his father arrives and shoots the guy dead. He also orders Albrecht to man up and walks away. Albrecht has a thousand things going on in his head that make him puke. Later, he witnesses his father rounding up the prisoners and executing every single one of them. Friedrich gets into a fight with a guy, resulting in them being imprisoned for 24 hours as punishment. The next day in literature class, the teacher asks everyone to write a poem about winter. When they're done, Albrecht is called to the front of the class to recite his. Initially, he describes how he feels about wintertime and how it has changed since he was a kid. But the poem takes a turn when he starts going against his father's principles and calling him out for killing helpless children last night. The teacher takes him to the director's office and his father is called. He strictly asks Albrecht to write a better poem tomorrow, but Albrecht refuses, claiming that he still stands by what he said. As a result, he is expelled and drafted to a fight on the Eastern Front. 
Friedrich only finds out about this when he's let out of the cell. He doesn't understand why Albrecht had to write the poem and recite it in front of the class. Albrecht claims that it brought him peace and he doesn't regret doing it. The two get into a slight argument, but end up crying in each other's arms in the end. For the next training, the cadets are made to go into a hole on a frozen lake and come out through another. Kristoff goes first and joins the two holes with a rope so it would be easier for the others. When it's Albrecht's turn, he jumps inside, but stops midway. Friedrich realizes what he's doing and frantically looks for him on the ice. He finds Albrecht, who touches the ice from beneath as a last goodbye. He eventually drowns and dies in the incident. Friedrich can do nothing but cry and is brought to his room by his friends. At night, he writes an obituary for his friend and gives it to the director, who refuses to publish it in the newspaper. According to him, the place in the newspaper's obituary section is for people who died for their leader, the soldiers, and for their nation. Albrecht's father also gets the news about his death. While his wife cries, he just claims that Albrecht was too weak and shows no remorse. Friedrich is still mourning the death when the boxing instructor asks him to think about his future. The final fight of the boxing tournament is the next day, and he wants Friedrich to be ready for it. The following day, even the governor is in the audience, smiling like his son never died. Friedrich fights with all his might for the first half. However, seeing the governor's smile triggers something in him, causing him to take down all the defense. In the end, the opponent wins and Napola is humiliated. As a result, the next day, Friedrich is stripped of his uniform and asked to walk back to his room naked. After he packs his bag, he's kicked out of the academy. In the last scene, he leaves for his hometown. It is then narrated that until 1945, there were 40 Napolas around Germany, with more than 15,000 students. When the war was finally a lost cause, the poor men were sent out into the final struggle. They were blinded by the extremist principles which resulted in the deaths of more than half of them. That was all from the video. I hope you liked it. Subscribe for more content like this and hit the like button to help us out. Also, leave a comment if you want us to recap your favorite movie. Until next time, take care.